A pre-balance inspection can identify possible causes of vibration on your mulcher with a large pry bar lift up on both ends of the rotor. No identifiable movement should be observed. Next, using a dial indicator to measure the end play, pry the rotor from each side and record the movement. You should not observe more than an eighth inch of movement. Any movement that exceeds our recommendations could indicate a problem with the rotor bearings and should be investigated before continuing the balancing process. Next, remove the protective collar from the stub shaft and fix a dial indicator shown in this video. Run out that exceeds 14 thousandths could indicate a bent stub shaft or rotor. Contact FECON for possible solutions for repair. Open your case and inspect. The FMB100 should include the following. The accelerometer plugs into the FMB100 as shown in the video. Attach the mounting bracket to the accelerometer as shown. Next, install the yellow tachometer to the bracket. Install the tachometer using the existing belt cover mounting holes. Install the accelerometer in the most forward position possible to the rotor. Attach to the body using one of the existing belt cover bolts. Line up both sensors so that they are in line with the center of the rotor shaft. Secure all cables to the head so that they do not come in contact with any moving parts. Install reflective tape on the rotor pulley in line with the photo tack. When the tachometer is in line with the reflective tape, the red light will start to flash, indicating it is ready for use. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start to explain how the FMB100 works. So right now we've got two accelerators, accelerometers mounted, one to the right side, one to the left side of the rotor. the ground and position it parallel to the floor in the cutting position. Engage the rotor and allow it to reach full operating speed. Turn the, turn the unit on by pressing the power button. Right now the right side accelerometer is plugged in and the display indicates the RPM of the rotor, magnitude of vibration measured in inches per second, and the location of the heavy spot measured in degrees. Depress the averaging button, which is located right next to the power button. The unit will average the data from your machine for about 7 seconds, and then will statically display the readings. Write down these values for the right side. Now you will need to get a reading on the left side. Unplug the accelerometer and plug in the left side accelerometer. Now the FMB100 will be displaying the values from the left side of the rotor. Repeat the process as you did on the right side. Now write down the values for the left side. Rerun the test for both right and left side again. Write down the new values. 
Okay, so we've wrote, we've written down our measurements, and what we've determined that the side with the most vibration is the right side. We had 0.36 inches per second. The other side had 0.14 inches per second. So this is the heavy side. The angle of the heavy point is at 303 degrees. So the way we decide where the weight goes, the process is this. First, we want to find the zero point of the rotor. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the rotor until the tape lines up with the photo tack and the red light on top starts to flash. So here's our tape. It should start flashing here soon. Okay, right there. So now the new zero point is this line right here. So this accelerometer line lines up with the center of the shaft. That is our new zero point. So in the direction of rotation, we want to locate where our heavy spot is. So I cut this piece of paper off of the sheet that's located in your manual and use this as a guide to locate the degrees. So we'll hold this up to the center, turn this to zero. So here's zero. And moving in the rotation, in the direction of the rotation of the rotor, we're going to find 303 degrees. Okay? So we've got 90, 180. 270, and you can see here, right around here, it's 300 degrees. So 303 degrees would be here. This is the heavy spot, okay? In order to offset the heavy spot, you need to place the amount of your correction weight 180 degrees from the heavy spot. So we're going to subtract 180 degrees from the 303, which is 123 degrees. So if you look on this sheet, here's 120. Spot's going to be right around here. Now we're going to turn the rotor to this spot here, points to up here where you can see where we're going to add the weight. Okay. So this right here is the point where we're going to add our weight. Now to determine what weight, you take your inches per second, in this case 0.36, we're going to multiply it by 200. That's going to give us a weight of 72. So we're going to add 72 grams at 123 degrees, which is right here. Okay, now we're going to add. We're going to measure 72 grams. Okay, so we got 48. We need a little bit more. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're going to go ahead, and this is the amount of weight we're going to add in our in the spot opposite of our heavy spot. Okay, so now we've determined that this is going to be the, the location where the correction weights are going to be added. Now what we want to do when we add the weights, if here's the 72 grams of weight we measured out, we want to put them closer to the outside of the rotor. So we're going to place them somewhere in about this position where you can get a well all the way around it and have access. Uh, just make sure that if it's a, this is our FGT drum, if it's an HT top, HDT style with the paddles, you want to make sure that you don't add the weight anywhere where it's going to uh, obstruct your ability to remove the hardware. But in this case, the hardware comes from the top of the tool, it's not going to hurt anything. So we're going to grind this area here, we're going to weld our range plates right here.
Okay, now we have the new correction weight welded on. We're going to go ahead and run this one more time, and we're going to see what our values are. Okay, so we have uh, ran it one more time after we installed the correction weights, and we moved it from 0.36 on the right side. We dropped it now to 0.12 on the right side. So the way this works is once you've got the got one side, the heavy side, lower than the previous light side, it's time to switch over to the other side and work on that. So right now we have 0.20, and we're going to try to drive that down just a little bit lower. Okay. okay, we're going to go ahead and measure out the weight, the correction weights for the left side now. Uh, so if you remember, our magnitude uh, measured in nips was 0 0.20. Okay, um, to set the weight, we want to multiply that by 200. That should give us 40 grams. So we're going to go ahead and measure that out. All right, we're at 38.5. Once we weld that on, that additional weight will probably give us roughly the 40 grams we're looking for. The heavy spot on this particular one was at 313 degrees. Now because I'm on the left side now, the direction of rotation is this way, we're going to be moving in a counterclockwise, a counterclockwise position. So you can see here, 90 degrees, 180, this is 300, so 313 degrees about where the heavy spot is. So we're going to go directly across 180 degrees. It's going to be about right. It's about right here. So we're going to weld our weight right around this position. Okay, now we've determined the position of the rotor where we want to weld. We've got a tool right near the end of the rotor, so we can't obviously weld anything that close. So the closest position that we're going to be able to put this weight is going to be right about here to give us enough room closest to the edge of the rotor as we can without interfering and giving us enough room to get in here to weld this weight. So this is our 40 gram weight. We're going to go ahead and weld that and then we're going to run a final test to see if, uh, if it drove our vibration down. Works all the all the die hard when look at the uh, point out of the safety. Arms aren't covered, beards hanging on anything, pack of light up. And we're going to find the most important one. Okay, now that we got the, the new weight, correction weight welded, we're going to go ahead and run, run our reading again, see if we get down to this uh, below 0.15S.